Hello and welcome to Gwent. So CDPR just released a video about the swap update, which is actually gonna be the last patch that's coming before the big patch, uh, the homecoming patch that's coming uh, later this year. And uh, the swap update mainly aims to balance the game and uh, fix create. And a lot of players uh, believe that create is gonna be removed entirely. However, that is not the case. And uh, we're gonna go over the list of changes from what I consider to be the best to worst. Because it's a bit of a mixed bag, but overall I would say it's a positive patch. <clears throat> so let's just check it out. The first and the best change, in my opinion, is that they separate swap and mulligan. So swap abilities don't trigger when uh, they are mulliganed. So you actually need to trigger them with appropriate cards. This is amazing and uh, one of the best solutions I can think of to the problem with War Dancer and uh, other like swap cards that actually gave you uh, advantage in the mulligan phase. There's not much to uh, say about this, this is just a, a perfect solution. So let's just go to Slave Driver. One of the crate cards that is not really liked by many. This is one of the crate cards, but that actually doesn't have high RNG because your opponent usually doesn't have a lot of bronzes. How would I say that this card doesn't really have uh, much of an identity itself because it's usually used as a filler in the decks. If there's nothing, there's, there's no bronze that really makes a lot of sense for your deck, uh, then you just simply use the Slave Driver and you most likely pick a a decent card by itself. You almost never try to go for some combo. <clears throat> and Slave Driver is going to be changed. Uh, from 1 power to 10 power, to damage an ally uh, down to 1, and deal that damage to an enemy. So it's basically like a, a one worse Cyclops that doesn't kill your unit, but brings it down to 1 point. Now, it might seem like, uh, okay, sure, it's a one worse Cyclops, like, who cares? It's terrible. But the fact that it goes down to one point actually enables uh, some uh, combos and synergies. For example, Emir can pick it up, uh, you can decoy it, you can Mandrake it, you can Mardrum it. So this is a really good change because it uh, changes a card that... I don't think that necessarily has to be changed, but changes it into a card that could actually enable an archetype by itself. Because you can Mardrum and Mandrake those cards that you actually damage down to one, imagine just uh, using a Knight's power. And uh, much like the Cyclops, you can, you can have a more flexible uh, removal, so you can run some Knights and blow up some Greatswords with them and I don't know, after that, Mandrake the Knight, then use Slave Driver on it again and again, so it can really punish uh, passive decks, I suppose, that don't even deal like one damage <coughs> to finish off the guys that uh, the Slave Driver uh, whipped into shape. So these are all what I would consider the great changes. So, let's just go to the good ones. At least I consider them to be the good ones. Uh, not over there. So, all geared. <clears throat> They're changing all geared from 9 power to 5 power to death fish, resurrect this unit on a random row. And doesn't weaken anymore. So, this change is mainly uh, justified by the fact that you can discard all geared. Uh, to have a very easy uh, advantage in a later round. So, for example, you can discard all geared as a as a king <clears throat> as a king brand, and uh, even if you lose the round, the next round all geared is gonna pop up and kind of gonna kind of going to block the open pass of your opponent, uh, which is a big deal. And uh, this cannot be easily shut down. Uh, a seer can uh, shuffle back all geared into the deck. Uh, Caretaker can take him out, Osro can eat him. But 
it is just cannot be uh, shut down easily. Unlike, for example, Morgvarg, well, Morgvarg is still very powerful. Also, it was very similar to Morgvarg. But if you have Morgvarg on the board, you can uh, lock Morgvarg. Of course, usually people don't have it. But, like, there are more options. You can muzzle Morgvarg, you can lock him, you can kill him a lot of times. But if Ogid is in the graveyard already, and he's about to resurrect, there's not that many ways to shut him down. Although I'm skeptical about his value as a 5 power uh, Death Fish Resurrect card, that is basically gonna be only perhaps usable in monsters but even in monsters it's gonna be uh, probably not good enough partially because it's a bit slow although it's it's nice to have a guy that's always a plus five to consume guys but because it goes on random row every time you can just put it next to a brand and say like hey go ham it, it ogred all the time so that's not going to work <coughs> But I understand why they are making this change, making uh, Ogier uh, uh, less of a dangerous carryover. And uh, if you want to have that effect, that you want the carryover, then you actually have to play Morgvark in Skellige, but Morgvark has actually more ways to be uh, shut down. So that's that. I don't really like what it was changed into but i get why it was changed it was a little bit too similar to morgvark and many times it was preferred over morgvark because it was uh, harder to shut down so the next card is gonna be brewer the leader play a silver or bronze dwarf from your deck only change is gonna be that he can't play disloyal units he can't play agents so you won't be able to play your spy. Their justification is that uh, this way none of the factions or leaders will have access to their spy right away. And this is a good change. I would just classify it as a good change. It doesn't really, it's not really earth shattering. And I would, I, I personally think that spies are a little too good. That's why they are included in all the decks. And uh, I would prefer uh, a change along those lines than changing Brewer, but I think like changing Brewer is probably acceptable at this point, so still would call it a good change, however a rather simple one. The next change is uh, to the Dumb Banner. I have to try hard to not call them Dumb Bananas. So the Dumb Banner are simply gonna be changed that if you're losing by more than 20 on turn start, summon this unit on random row. Uh, so it's gonna be 25. Uh, that justification is that it's gonna make it more uh, less consistent, which is true. Not sure if uh, that is the way they should go about it. The power level is not gonna really change and Playing spies with them, a spy with them will be even more important. So that that's basically how you get them out. You just play a spy, don't better rush out. It's still like this is a good change, I suppose. Like that's why we have it in the good category. I don't really like how it's really done, but I suppose it's still a good change. Maybe it would be nicer if they were like. The same but less power. I don't know. If they were free power and 20 still, I don't know. We'll see about this change. It's definitely a good change, but it, it's gonna make them less consistent and uh, makes uh, using well make using them with a spy even more important. Uh, and we are getting to the meh category. At least I call it the mech category. So Elven Scout is is can be considered a, a highly well highly random controlled RNG card because you create out of a pool of all the bronze creatal units and uh, that are not in your starting deck. So it, th this can be modified somewhat. 
the pool of cards can be modified somewhat. Uh, but yeah, it's it's it, I think it's a fairly interesting card, and it's simply gonna be changed uh, to a, a ten power card that swaps one card. Like we have other cards that swap, so these are the cards that swap. Uh, of course, inside the square tail, we only have the Reed officer, uh, Saskia, uh, Francesca, and now we're gonna have the the Alban scout that is a ten point and swaps one card so obviously it will be uh, the ideal uh unit to swap the war dancers for example it's well the vrihid officer is actually better swapping the vanguard so that's that's that like it's not, not a particularly interesting card like like it's fine like that that that's kind of how i feel about it And uh, they definitely didn't get rid of all the crate options. Now we're getting to the... The bad part. Kind of. I do consider this in the, the why category. Like, why make this change? So, we have uh, Black Blood, which creates any bronze, silver, or necrophage, or vampire, or destroy a bronze, silver, or necrophage, or vampire. Now, uh, Black Blood is getting changed from... Create a silver to actually create a bronze uh, vampire or necrophage and give it and boost it by two, and the other effect destroy is the same. It's a uh, destroy bronze or silver is the same, but you actually uh, create a bronze. So they are getting rid of the silver part, bronze or silver. I'm not sure how I feel about this, like, okay, I suppose this perhaps make the cards less swingy, it's just like, okay, like, like, if some, if people had problem with the create, I don't see how this is gonna make them happy, of course it takes out the silver options and just, you just get a boosted bronze, so, I don't know, sure. You, you can argue for the mech category, or I don't know who would be uh, excited about this change. I suppose it does uh, just take out some swinginess out of the card by getting out the silver options, but... And you actually get boost instead. So, that's that. But, let's just go to the bad changes, the clearly bad changes that I really don't like. And the first one is Doppler. So, Doppler is not a good card. It creates a bronze unit from your faction. It can be somewhat considered to Elven Scout, uh, but without the way to actually... Uh, like, lower the options, the amount of options, because Elven Scout can pull the, the bronze units that are already uh, in your deck. So, for example, if you play a Shoop deck without Weather Counter, then you play Elven Scout, uh, then you actually might... Uh, you have a, a pretty okay chance to actually pull a, a single Weather Counter. Now, Doppler just pulls from all the Bronze units in your faction, and you're offered three, and you choose one. Now they are changing Doppler to completely random. You spawn a bronze unit from your faction completely random I don't get it like why is controlled random that is probably not worth that's not good enough in the first place uh, gets replaced for completely random I just don't see it I just don't see the justification of course I can see the argument that Oh, this is gonna make the card complete garbage. Like, if you complained about crate before, you can't because this is gonna be complete garbage. So, people don't gotta play it anymore. But at that point, you might as well just remove it. But I suppose, like, some players might wanna just play it for the lose. But still, like, I consider this change just clearly bad. Like, control random over complete random? I take that over any day. Like, if anything, I would like to see some 
I don't know, like, different ways to go about these cards, like... Imagine if you had to... Select, like... 8 to 10 cards, or... In your deck builder, and... And the Doppler actually chose from them, or... I, I know that wouldn't be, like, good in Arena, but... I don't know. Created from them. That... So, the way to lower the RNG. I just don't know. I, I really don't like the whole spawn random bronze. That That's just... that just insane level of RNG right there. Like, one would that even make Hearthstone cry. Like, just getting at the random... random bronze? Okay. So, not a fan. Argument can be made that, hey, no one cared about Doppler anymore. Uh, kicking it one more doesn't really hurt this Humpty Dumpty, but I care, okay? This is just a bad change. Even if they don't really have a way to... Uh, I don't know, improve this card? I don't know. But, like, this is just bad. Like, a random bronze is clearly worse than a controlled random bronze. So, I would like to hear some arguments about that, that, hey, how is that any better? Anyway, uh, let's just go to the other changes. Runestones. And a lot of people hate runestones, and uh, they decided to change it. To create the silver, your faction card. To create the silver or bronze, your faction card. All the runestones have that uh, uh, ability now. And uh, that's not an improvement. I know that, uh, well, this lowers their power level, obviously, and their consistency, but actually raises what people hate about runestones, and that's their uh, swinginess. Sometimes you're just gonna get a bronze and it's gonna be complete trash, but sometimes you're just gonna get the weather counter, and that's even gonna be more unlikely, and when it happens, people are just gonna be even more mad. So... I don't think this is a good change. Like, okay, like this is the kind of change that, hey, just make that card really bad, but also, well, in, in many ways, like... I, ju I just can't really justify this change in any way. Like, there's no redeeming, like, I can see this like a, as a nerf, but it's... It's not really good, and doesn't get rid of the crate aspect as anyway, so... Like, if people, like, if people have a problem with crate, this is not gonna make them happy. Those who like the card, that's not gonna make them happy. This is basically just an all-around lose-lose for everybody. So, don't like it. Anyway. And uh, the last card in the... In the bad category, the really... Well, I called it the terrible category in my notes. Is Winch. So, Winch actually created the Bronze Nor Realms machine. Uh, that's how it works right now, and although it's not really a popular, well, it's well, it's a very popular card, I suppose, in in hand sold. Uh, let's just go and limit to bronze machines. So, th this is where we can see that there are not that many bronze machines in the game. So you're actually getting offered three cards out of six. Those are some really good odds. It's not a highly random card. If you're fine with like two of them, the, the chances are really good that you're gonna get something good. So I would say that as far as crate cards are concerned, uh, that are high RNG, like this is easily not one of them. This is not a high RNG crate card. This is a, a very low RNG crate card uh, that offers you controlled randomness. At least currently. And... Uh, the suggested change, well, the, the change they're gonna go with, is that instead of creating a Bronze No Realms machine, it's gonna boost all machines on your side by free. Which is just a terrible uh, card, and it's a really boring one. And I just, well, maybe it's gonna see some play, I don't, I very much doubt it though. But you would need to really spam machines for that, but even then it's just like... Eh, you need to have at least four machines on the board just to break even. Four machines. That's that's a lot. And uh, their partial reasoning for for making this change, 
was that uh, the hand sword combo that Naneki can put it back. Uh, but that's just bad, and uh, they kind of displayed that with uh, with Brewer. You can change leaders if you have a problem with uh, wait. You can change leaders if you have a problem with certain cards. Although in the in the case of spies, I would say the spies should be the one that getting changed. But I accept I can accept the change to to Brewer. However, in case of King Hansold, King Hansold for a long time, with the exception of Allgird, can only pull two cards or maybe three cards. But with the addition of Winch, suddenly that can be like so maybe you you winch out like uh, three of the same like three battering rams and you put it back with Nanaki, then you just get the battering ram and like wow five battering rams baby. And uh, this is just uh this is just an oversight with King Cancelled. Choose a bronze machine or Cadvany ally and play up to two copies of it from your deck. Done. So you don't need to. Murder winch, and I'm saying this is not not a huge fan of Hansel whatsoever. I just don't feel like uh, Well, also I don't really hate winch, but I, I just don't really like Hansel, but I just feel like this change is not really justified then and uh, Winch is not really getting changed for the better Although I, su I suspect well, I can accept that those who uh, Hate RNG might be just say like okay, but they got rid of RNG and the new card is is not gonna be RNG, so it's a win. So I I can accept that, but they're kind of like removing a card uh, for kind of the wrong reasons, the way I see it. However, you can consider the win, but uh, I don't think Winch really uh, becomes a card that uh, is gonna be interesting to play. Again, you're gonna boost all machines on your side by three, so that's like, ugh. So that's it. So that's gonna be the patch. Overall, pretty good. And those cards that are uh, getting uh, shafted, so to speak, are probably gonna be unusable. So we're not really gonna, not really gonna see the the bad part of this patch. So probably the popularity of rune stones. I don't know, Doppler. No one's gonna Doppler. And Winch is gonna drop down. And how will this patch actually affect the meta? So Winch getting. Uh, Nerfed is obviously a, a big one to hand sold. Roostone's getting nerfed is mainly a mainly a, a nerf to alchemy. So we got one against hand sold, one against alchemy. Doppler getting changed doesn't matter. So that really doesn't matter. Black blood getting changed that's again a one to alchemy. Uh, no one else really uses black blood. Elven scout getting changed that's elf spam Brewer. So, Elf Spren Brewer, one strike, uh, Hansold, one strike, and Alchemy, two strikes. Dumb better getting changed, that makes it two strikes for Hansold, so Hansold is getting uh, hit again. And the uh, Brewer can play Spies, that may, means, okay, Brewer getting uh, uh, hit again. Or give getting changed, that's mainly, uh, well, of course, that could affect Consume Master a little bit, because there was the... the Frog plus eat the all gear, then you have the the all gear in your graveyard combo. But most likely, it's a, a change to King Brand. It's not gonna affect too much. However, it's a it's a good change to make because uh, with the removal of uh, War Dancers, obviously people would have uh, would have been eager to jump on all gear as their best way to uh, prevent an open pass round two. So it's a it's a good good change obviously, but uh, I don't think it matters too much. And it of course it affects King Brand's um, power level a little bit, but not significantly. Slave Driver getting changed again a big strike to Alchemy. Not really sure why Alchemy is getting uh, screwed that much, but it could enable new decks, new decks that could actually. Uh, go up against uh, the one that is getting untouched quite a bit, which is Great Swords. So Great Swords can get punished by the Slave Drivers. You can just use the Slave Drivers to hit, well, target 
bigger units you have and you just kill ships, kill great swords, kill ships again, kill great swords, do something funny. Also, Mandrake can be really good against great swords, so that could be a really good option. And I wouldn't be surprised to see like more uh, Vicovaros, caretakers, more way to more ways to shut down great swords pop up because great swords are gonna be the deck to beat. Uh, at least at the early phases of this patch. We'll see if the meta changes, but uh, yeah, great swords are the obvious uh, way to go. And uh, separating Swab and Mulligan, of course. Uh, the first change that I discussed uh, is also gonna affect uh, the the power level of, uh, of Squirtel. So, obviously Squirtel, mostly Elf Spam, and, um, and Alchemy mainly. And uh, hand out is the other big three that are getting uh, uh, shafted with these changes. But it's good to see that uh, some crit cards that are uh, less RNG are unaffected. That I know that some people wanted, wanted, uh, well, ask for it to be changed, like Shoop or Tristelakinesis. But uh, these cards are actually not too random, and uh, you actually get like three out of five or. In the in the case of Tristan Lacanesis, many times it's just a uh, guaranteed outcome, so it's definitely not part of the highly random uh, cards, but it's actually a uh, highly consistent controlled random cards. Anyway, that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching, and tell me what you think, and uh, see you next time.